So as all I do full time is produce videos, I'm constantly looking for ways to make that process faster. I had seen this Loop Deck CT around, saw a couple people talking about it, and it looked pretty solid for production. I'm pretty fast in Premiere Pro, it's my editor of choice, and all that comes down to having my keyboard set up in a very specific way. So I was curious as to whether or not this really could increase my editing speed and or offer me functionality that I couldn't get from keyboard shortcuts. So is this thing a luxury, a necessity, or is it simply a gimmick? So I reached out to Loop Deck and they were nice enough to send one out for review. And we're gonna see how it checks out over the past few weeks of being used in my workflow. You ready? Let's go. Yo, I'm Brian P, you're watching Bad C Tech, and today we're checking out the CT Reassignable Hardware Control Surface from Loop Deck. So the Loop Deck CT retails for a hefty $549.99 US and functions as a reassignable control surface for a lot of popular audio and video editing software. And it offers functionality for other often used apps as well. The packaging feels really premium and the overall size of this thing is much smaller than I had anticipated. Here it is next to a 65% keyboard for reference. I'm happy to say that the controls all feel really premium on this. Having used some less than quality MIDI controllers over the years, it's really nice to see and feel these controls here. The knobs have a light notch tactility to them. They do click on depress as well. The circle buttons are very firm. All the touch screen buttons are very responsive. I never had to press anything multiple times to get anything to actuate. There's even haptic feedback on all the touch areas as well. The scroll wheel here is probably the star of the show. It feels amazing. If there's a low point here, it's the square buttons. They have play to them and they lack that crisp response of the circles, but nothing here gives the impression that it's going to wear out. They just aren't as solid as the smaller buttons. The cable is detachable USB-C. It comes with a logo 90 degree cable. My only gripe here is that the cable is rather short at one meter. This is great for laptop use, but in a desktop scenario, you'll definitely want an extension. It's ergonomically, I think it makes the most sense to have this at the left of your board so your keyboard hand can move over to execute tasks. When I'm flying through an edit, the last thing I want to do is take my hand off the mouse. And that's the first thing that me a little skeptical about the CT. If you really have your shortcuts down and you have your board laid out well, ideally you never have to move your left hand off your WASD keys, that side of your board, and you never move your hand off the mouse. This is how I edit all the time, and I'm always looking for ways to make this even more efficient. And the first thing I'll say about that is this. It will slow you down in the beginning while you're learning. There is a learning curve that comes with this thing. The second thing I'll say about that is that after you get on the other side of that learning curve, I find myself using the CT for practically everything and using my keyboard way less when I'm editing. Watch. The main thing I use more than anything else when editing is zoom in, zoom out on the timeline. I have A as my zoom out and S for zoom in. It looks like this. I use ripple delete too, a lot. It's on D, so my main three functions, main three keys. The CT zooms like this and it ripple deletes like this. The other thing I do a lot is undo. That's right here, dedicated redo, function undo. Save, same thing. I also nudge clips a lot, particularly to match up audio files to video. Now the keyboard shortcut is alt plus arrows. One of the few times I actually have to take my hands off the mouse. I don't have to anymore. Nudge on the CT is right here. Of course, you're gonna scrub your timeline, which is this big wheel right here. It will cover more ground the faster you rotate it, and it feels really intuitive. You can also hold the function key down to scrub one frame at a time. This wheel feels insanely good, by the way. Play pause is the touch screen in the center, and the only thing I'll say here is that it's not as fast as toggling the spacebar. So if you start stop rapidly to see how something flows together, spacebar is still gonna be faster. You also get a hotkey to go full screen in your program window. This is usually the tilde key, but you also have to have the right pane selected. This button full screens the program window regardless of your active pane. Now, the real power of this thing, and ultimately what sold me on it, color grading and correction. Press two to go to your color menu. Go full screen and now you have tactile control of your basic color parameters on the outside knobs without even having to have the Lumetri panel even visible. Same thing goes for wheels, vignette, creative modes, all in full screen. The only thing you have to have the console active for is when you're working with curves. Something not where you want it to be or you're not clear on a button function, hit the loop deck logo and load up the customization screen and you can change a lot a lot. The only limitation I found so far is that there's no way to use the knobs to affect parameters in the Premiere Pro effects panel. So like two things I use a lot, rotation and scale, there's no way to assign those. But Loop Deck confirmed that functionality is on the menu for a future software update. That's Premiere Pro alone and just a surface scratch of what you can really do in there. Do I think you'll edit faster when you get on the other side of that learning curve? Absolutely. 
I definitely do. And the functionality of having that full screen color correction is something you cannot do on a mouse and keyboard. Maybe if you have a multiple monitor setup, but on a standard setup, no dice. So it handles all of the Adobe Suite really well. I hear it kills for Lightroom too, I just don't use it. But that's definitely not where it stops. Even on your desktop, you get volume control, media keys, undo, shortcuts for search, file explorer, emoji keyboard, snip, and system lock. You can also long press any touchscreen command it'll show the details of the function inside the wheel. So out of the box, it has deep native support for Adobe Suite, Ableton Live, and Final Cut Pro X. If you're working with multiple programs, it'll change its own layout instantly when you move between windows. That's already a ton of functionality. But at the time you're watching this, Loop Deck is rolling out a big software update. It's big for two reasons. Number one, you now have full native integration with Streamlabs OBS. This works a lot like a Stream Deck. They still have a ways to go before the experience is as smooth as using a Stream Deck, but the idea here is very similar. You only have a four by three grid of touch panels, but you also have access to all the other tactile controls here as well. No GIFs or animations on your touch screens though. Number two, and this is a big one, this is the Loop Deck Profile Creator, and you can now create custom profiles for any software that's not covered in the core library. Loop Deck has already started with a few offerings of some of their most requested stuff. One caveat here is that currently most of these profiles only cover English language keyboard configs. The implementation for DaVinci Resolve is pretty fleshed out. It's nice. The only thing you won't have access to though is hardware control over the color correction because that's behind Resolve's own API. See that's the difference. These are all user created profiles whereas their core native integrations are all supported using the various software companies' own API. It still offers up a lot of functionality though. The Loop Deck still changes layout on program launch and there will ultimately be a place for users to share and get access to custom profiles for other popular software. Other little odds and ends, there's actually an eight gig flash drive in here so you can store and recall profiles on this device. This is excellent if you're running custom layout and traveling with the unit to a different system. So that's a ton of functionality and the hardware build is very good. The only soft spot here is that this product lives and dies by its software integration. Now, luckily, the software is very good and they're constantly working on it. Full disclosure, I did experience a couple freezes while I was in programming mode, but it's worth noting that I was testing various versions of beta software not the final software release. So I don't think stability is gonna be a big concern. I've edited several projects with this now start to finish and didn't have any issues. So it did ultimately increase the speed of my edits and it did offer me functionality that I couldn't get with my regular keyboard and mouse setup, as well as a host of all kinds of other functionalities I hadn't even considered when I first looked at it but it's still a luxury. I mean, $549.99 is no joke. They do still offer their previous model, the Loop Deck Plus at $249.99, a lot more acceptable. No touchscreen stuff, and it has a much larger footprint. There's also more immediate tactile controls, but while I've not used it, I understand that the actual feel of the controls has been improved a lot between the Plus and the CT. If you're already invested in the Adobe ecosystem and you have the pockets, it gets a recommend from me. I mean, turning little knobs and dials while you're doing production stuff, is really fun. I would imagine that the Final Cut integration is really strong as well. But if your editor is not covered by one of the native integrations like DaVinci Resolve, it may not be worth it. I mean, 550 for a Resolve controller that doesn't have access to color correction, it's a pretty tough sell. But then again, most of the full featured dedicated control surface options for Resolve start right around 1K. You could even have this and a tangent wave color console on your desk for under a grand. The idea that it has a lot of functionality and compatibility outside maybe just your regular production workflow is nice. Like the Streamlabs integration is great, but chances are if you're serious about streaming, a Stream Deck is one of the first things you bought. So that functionality may be lost on you. I've actually started using a lot of the desktop features as well. Like having Snip right there is great and having a single button press for shadow play recording activation is great as well. So ultimately my take on it is this, a dedicated control surface is a luxury, not a necessity. Plenty of people can edit super fast and get great results using just their mouse and keyboard. The other thing you have to take into consideration is is it worth prioritizing a purchase like this over some other piece of kit, like a slider or a new camera body or a new piece of glass. You just have to look at your own situation. So do you need it? No. Do you want it? Probably, I mean, look at this thing. Any questions at all, hit me in the comments or drop by the Discord. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, stay up.